Amen. Amen. And let me take, whilst you are taking your pen, and before let me take this opportunity to correct this mistake. Somebody was born in 2000, 25th August 2000, and today is 25th August 2018. How old is the person? 18, right? When is the starting date of this person? 25th August 2000. Good. Does God has a starting date? So we don't say as old as you are. God is no old. It's as so as you are. If you limit age to God, that means he has a starting point and one day you will finish. Mm. The Bible says infinite. He has no beginning. He has no end. So the song goes like this. A shine of days as so as you are. As so as you are, you remain the same. Ancient of days, as so as you are, as so as you are, you remain the same. So you see, the person who was born in 2000 is not the same as he was. He never remained a baby 18 years later, right? So correct the song. Anytime you sing a song, the words in it are powerful. Amen. Amen. We thank God for today. I'm happy to see Bode one more time. Bode, welcome. Uh -huh. And uh, who have not seen Robert is Robert. And what's your name? David. David, all right. And uh, Angela, no, the one in front of you. Abigail, Abigail welcome. Today you brought your Bible. Where is it? Show me your Bible. It's inside my Bible. Take it, please. We are in the church. I want all mobile phones in your bags and Bibles out. Yeah. All mobile phones in the bag and take your Bible or your pen and paper out. <laughs> Church is a kind of school. Yes. It's for notices. Notices on your telephone. Ask a quote for the Alice White. The shortest pencil is better than an M uh, and the longest memory. I always say it. Write something down. Amen. Are you happy to be here? We are going to learn something today. Yesterday was the Permem day. Permem is the Pentecostal men's movement. And today happens to be the end of our week. I want you all to give a big hand applause to Dickin Eric. Thank you. Among all the numerous men in the church, President was in this post so he couldn't come. And he asked permission. Only Eric could come. And yesterday it was marvelous in Hoboken. So in the evening, presiding text me if I went, I said yes. He said, Can you share with us? But before that, I'd already prepared my notes. So if I have to share what I learned, it's like me copying and coming to give you what somebody preached. I'm a brother like that. I'm a teacher, I'm not a preacher. But thanks be to God, when God speaks, He speaks. When I came home, I said what I've already put down. Almost seven points of this pre, uh, speaker's points were in my list. So it goes in the same. But I'm going to elaborate mine more with examples so that you can learn from it. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for this very moment. I honor your holy name, Lord Jesus, for how far you have brought us. Today, you are going to teach us one more time, as you always do. I pray that let every heart that is here be receptive unto your word. Let every mind that has been captivated by the enemy be set free. Let everyone who is worried that you will be delayed from what is going to be taught them, let the person's heart be free. I thank you that you have taken care of everything. Myself standing here, I'm just an empty vessel. If you don't speak through me, I am nothing. So for that today, I pray thee, Lord, put me aside and use whatever that you have already given to me to teach your people. This and more we ask. Through the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your son, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Men. The image Amen. and the glory of God. Men. Strong, Strong and courageous. Men. We are firmly established. All the men have deviated, except presiding and Brad James. Men don't sit down. You stand up. Men. The image and the glory of God. Men. Strong 
and courageous. Men, we are firmly established. God bless you. Yes. You see yourself like 13, 14, 15, teen, 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 teenage. Uh -huh. Within 10 years' time, you know more be teenagers. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like my own, the big belly like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like once like you, but today I'm being a father. One Amen. <laughs> God bless you. What is this? <laughs> the theme for our message or for the Feminine Week is remain in God's image and in his basic message. The theme was taken from 1 John 2, 24 to 27. I tapped mistakenly, forgive me, to 27. We are not going to read for now. Very soon I will come there. If we say God's image, what does it mean? The Bible says Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let's go to Genesis. Everything begins from Genesis chapter 1. I want one King James and one Ivy. 26, please. Genesis 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm reading from the NIV version. Okay. Then God said, God said, Let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. in our likeness, mm -hmm. and let them rule over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and all the creatures that move al along the ground. Amen. Amen. Add 27 for me. 27. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Amen. Amen. The New King James says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Image and? Likeness. Image and? Likeness. Good. Let's see something here. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created. So God created. So God created man in his own. 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 He repeats, he said. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. Therefore, the theme says, man, you must remain in the image of God. God created you in his image, therefore remain there. But the question is, have we been able to remain in his image? Let's go to Genesis chapter 5. If you reach there, just put your finger there. We'll come back to there. What's your surname, please? Gisela. Gisela. Why is your Bible? Why is your notebook to take notes? Next time I'll bite you. I'll forgive you today. Put your finger there. We are coming. There's a quotation here I want you to note. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Nana, please, can you stand up and read for us? It's in English. A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the devil. Good. The man who wanders away from the understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. In normal English, the man who walks away from knowing understanding, you will sit in the church with dead people. There are some church that are dead. Why? They don't understand things. Most of the time, you read the Bible, but you don't understand it. It's like no reading at all. So in G, the Bible says, But far be from it that our church shall be the church of the dead. Amen. We are people of young age. We need to understand scripture. That's why I brought this illustration to let you understand. Amen. Amen. So when God created man in his image, he didn't just do it for anyhow or anything. He had a purpose in mind. Now, the nature of God's image has these six characteristics. And yesterday, this man points out three, and I had already six. Number one is spirit. Number two, personal integrity. Number three is moral. Number four is relational. 
Number five is rational. There's a difference between relation and rational. And the last one is creative. And yesterday we prayed a lot about creative. So that today I pray we have time to reach that far. But let me go to the point one. When God made man, man was innocent and clean. Like this ball. Mm -hmm. Innocent and clean. And God said, because you are in my image, if you read further, the Bible says, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. So let's say this is God's spirit. So when God gave his spirit to man, what is happening to man? Arise. He's arising. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Powerful, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. Good. So man arose from whatever that he was around him. And he was floating in God's glory. Man had all these six things. God's spirit was in him. His integrity was intact. His morals, his personality, everything was perfect. Then God said in Genesis chapter 2, You see all the trees in this forest. You are free to chop. Eat. You feel like you can lick your hands, fingers. But that very one day, do not touch it. For the day you touch it and you eat of it, what will happen to you? Yeah. You do what? Yeah. Really? Okay. So this is man. And this is when God has given man the commandment. Did Adam obey? Yeah. 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 Did Adam eat from the fruit that God said he should eat? Yeah. Did he eat? Yeah. So did Adam obey? Uh -huh. So, no. So, Adam sinned. And God said, the day you eat from the tree, what will happen to you? So, the spirit that God had around man, the morals for everything that Adam had, because of sin, he could not rise up again. Why did I choose a dark color? Sin is always dark. That's why when you are doing your secret thing, you don't do it in public. I can walk out there with my wife, hand in hand, even with my hand on the shoulder or the back. Nobody can question me. Can you do that? <laughs> you be hiding and doing it. Abby? So the things you hide in secret and do, they are all dark. Amen. Amen. So, we see now here that Adam is now down here. What has happened? He has sinned. But God told him, the day that you eat, you will die. So now Adam is dead. He has lost most valuable things. But the question is, did Adam lose or uh, lose, dead and lose? Okay. God's image? No? No? Uh -huh. Yes or no? No. no. Okay. The image that he had, it was distorted. He didn't lose it, but it was distorted. It was kaput. For example, he's supposed to walk like that. Now, he's walking like that. Is the walking still walking? Yes. The walking is still walking, but it is distorted. Let me take a step one by one. I hope you have time. Now, if you have God's spirit, it means we are created to represent our uh, represent and worship our God who is spirit. Human beings are not merely material beings. When God created the first one, he breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. So actually you are a spirit living in a body so that you can work. Okay? There are other spirits who don't have body. For you to be 100% legal on earth, you must have a body. So any spirit who doesn't have a body is illegal. Mm -hmm. That's why when God wants to come on earth and live among us and walk and eat the food we eat, he needs to have a body. Otherwise, he himself will be legal. So anytime you dream a spirit is chasing you, you can turn back and rebuke that evil spirit and say, my friend, get out, you are illegal here. If you are not illegal, where is your body? To be a spiritual beings with body. Amen. Mm -hmm. Point number two. 
We are also personal beings. What does it mean? We are created personal by a personal God. Our person, personhood reflects the aspects of God. He created the human beings' personality. We are all unique individuals. Look at her face. Does she look like you? Look at her. Do you look like each other? If in twins, no matter how close they are resembled, they are, they are different. All of us are unique. What Jeffrey can do, I cannot do. What Anna can do, I can't. And what Mr. James can do with mathematics, I dare not try. Because all of us, we are what? Different and unique. That's how God made us. So our God is also a unique God. And that's how you are. Good. Again, we are also moral beings. God is holy. That is his moral. Again, he created humanity with moral compass and a conscience that give each of us an inner sense of difference between wrong and right. So when you are doing something wrong and your morals or your conscience does not judge you, then you are dead. That's right. Yeah. I'm standing here every day teaching you and preaching about righteousness and I meet, uh, your name Gisela, was it? Gisela. Uh, yeah, my French is on. Yeah. Oh, it has an iPhone 10 Come on. My conscience must judge whether what I'm doing is wrong. So God created you with that morals in your mind. I can't tell you that if you have a boyfriend, you still be here, him or her is a sin. You know it. You know it. There are some clothes that when you wear, even you can't even. I mean, the girl said you can't even move. You can't walk like an anta. <laughs> you see, and when you watch all these dirty movies, those girls standing by the roadside with their bag here, stopping cars, they dress like that. And if you, a child of God, coming to this place, have that kind of skirt on, what does your mother tell you? Are you here with me? So God is holy. That's why the Bible says, He that has called you is holy. So be ye holy. The words that come out of your mouth, Think about them first. Would Jesus say this word? That's part of your morals. Because of the time, I'm shutting them. Now, we had all of this. The conscience may not be deadened or see, uh, the conscience may be deadened or saved by sin, but it remains hardened uh, hard by in man. No matter how you sin, your conscience will in the night. Why did I even insult this woman? He's old to be my mother. Oh. I shouldn't have insulted her. What have I done? Then you'll be playing the real wine in your mind. It's your conscience. It's your morals. That's how God made. That's how God is. God is holy. He wants us to be pure. Amen. Amen. So all this we are talking about, Adam was here. I never read in the Bible anywhere that Adam confessed his sins. said, God, forgive me for eating the forbidden tree. Is that in your Bible somewhere? No. I've never read it. But you and I, we have a chance always to go back to God and say, God, forgive us. Don't we? Yeah. Yes. So Adam is still here. But again, we are relational beings. God reveals the relationship and the relational nature of the Trinity in the phrase, let us make man. God is God. You can, he could have done saying, man, I've made you. But he said, let us. Here is a plural form. He could be speaking to two or three or four or maybe many people at that time. Let us make a man. He relates. That's how we do too. In your family, you relate with your dad and mom. Your brothers and sisters. In your classroom, you have friends. You relate with people. At your working place, you have colleagues. You relate with them. When we come to church, we are one family. We relate with one another. So if I hate you, can I relate with you? No. So if you hate me, and you pretend, hello, and uh, how are you? And I turn back. <laughs> are you relating to me as you're going to relate to God? No. no. So being God image means he has made you a relational being. It means you are here, you got everything. Yes. But the moment sin comes in, you can't relate with me again. Mm. Yeah. Because I go talk to Ophelia about you. you see the air hostess? He and uh, uh, Derek, they are dating. Hmm. But I saw them last time in Jema uh, and uh, uh, Zara shopping for her. It's not true. And the woman just said, hey, shopping concern. 
knocking people's head. I am now acting from here. The relationship is now distorted. That's not how God made us. Amen. Rational beings. What does rational mean? Who is rational here? Robert, we need more. God is God of knowledge. While our knowledge is limited, God created us with the capacity to think and know and to learn. How many students are here? Almost all of us. Christianity is not a mindless faith. We think and we act. Judas is carried after betraying Jesus. What did he do? What did he do? He committed suicide. He sinned and he ended it. But if I tell you Judas did it, so go and do the same because in the Bible, won't you think first? Won't you learn and know that uh, I have the opportunity to confess, but he did not. He just ended it straight away. So Christianity is not a mindless faith. We think, we learn, and we act. That's why I always teach you to bring the Bible, then you learn even how to open them. If I tell somebody to go to Ecclesiastes, you flip here and flip there and flip there and flip there. By the time you get there, the service is over. <laughs> but when it's a mobile phone, you will have it. But one day, you walk on the street and a Muslim guy will give you a Bible in your hand. Are you a Christian? Yes. Yes, Allah. Open for me, Matthew 4, 14. Uh, flip, 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 flip. Are you able to learn? Where is your knowledge? So God created us so that we can also learn. Amen. Teaching group? Yeah. Okay. So, the intellectual aspect of God's image means that our minds are a vital part of how we are to love God. That we are to cultivate our minds. It's in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. And that we are to renew our minds by, uh, for, for transformation. That's why the Bible says, therefore be renewed by the transforming of your mind. You need to learn. If two years ago, you were doing one thing over and over again, and this time you are still doing it, have a sense of mind. How long am I here now? One and a half years roughly. Since I can say mobile phones and Bible, renew your mind. It will help you. One day you'll be here. I'll be old and sit at the back. Uh -huh. Good. Another one is that we are also emotional beings. We are, we are no robots. Who is a robot here? If you can hear me every time I see him and I want to avoid him, the moment I see him come and I begin to look at um, or have a chat with another person, I feel something inside of me. We are not robots. We have feelings. Not wrong feelings, I mean. Eh? We are made in the likeness of God, who himself is love. It is the emotive facet of our makeup that allows us to experience intimacy with those close to us, to feel compassion for others. If Brother Enoch is in difficult, I must have compassion and help him. If Bode say, Bode, please, I'm in trouble, please help me in prayer, I say, I'll pray for you, or I'll pray with you. Mm -hmm. If, brother, your name again? Mm -hmm. David, say, Elder, this girl hates me, please, can, can you go with me and let's talk about it? I have to do it. Why? Because I have compassion. If we don't, that's how God is. We are no robots. So if the Bible says God made us his likeness, that's what we are talking about. And the last point is? Creative. Creative. At your age, I want you to take this one very serious. Hmm? Many people go to school, especially in Africa, Ghana especially. They finish university, they stay home, they don't have jobs. Yeah. They blame it on the government. Yeah. No job, no jobs. Yeah. What did you go to school to learn? What? <laughs> what? What was paid for? Yes, people are paid for nothing. Yes, they can't be creative enough to create their own jobs. When I came back from prison almost eight years, nine years ago, when I was I was praying, God, I don't want to go to fabric. It's too low for me. God lifts me higher. I'm not saying those who are in fabric, I am more than them. I'm not saying that. But I checked myself and saw what I could do. I know what my gifts and my talents are. God set a new record for me. Somebody from prison, no house to live in. I was living in people's power. 
my brother in Holland, in his living, that's where I used to live. No money for train for school. Sometimes I still train. And I need to pay, see what I need to have. I went to school, get it out, diploma of SAC, three months in the room. No job. I said, ah, this is not what I bargained for. I am intelligent, just as God is. I am created, I'm going to create my own job. Hey, where is the money to buy a car? I prayed, God made a way. I started. And almost nine years, I'm still doing the same job. I created it. So in your, stu st uh, in your studies, you've been learning um, subjects that nobody will even employ you. Be creative. The Bible says in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And if God made you, you in his likeness and his image, you might do what? Creative. That's why last time I was thinking about this experiment, that creative idea came in. Now you begin to understand where God wants you to be and where sin has led you to be, right? It's all creative. So let's read. God is the creator. His glory is displayed in his creation. We have an insatiable desire to create, whether producing a piece of art, starting a business, writing a book, or landscape the yard. We all can. We can start writing a book at this age. Who know J.K. Rowling, the one who made uh, J uh, Harry Potter? Very rich, eh? You know what age he started writing? Most of you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can write songs. Even though you can't sing, you can just write songs. You can sell them. Poems, children's books. So when God said, subdue the earth, he meant harness a natural environment. Make something out of it. So if the Bible says we are in God's image, that's how it means. But to remain there, that's the question. How can you remain in God's image? The film is split in two. Remaining in God's image and his basic message. Now, this is the image I'm talking about. The image of God and the fall. So the question now is, did the fall affect the image of uh, God in men and women since then? The answer is yes. Now we can't even think straight. Mm -hmm. Instead of you to be creative and take your pen and paper and be doing something, you take your WhatsApp phone and... By the time you realize two hours is gone, the image is distorted. And Robert, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Good. So, God being so kind, he didn't let us be in that state forever. He said, no, I have to redeem my kind. I don't want all these good qualities to get missing. After all, men were made in my image. So what did God do? He set up a program called redemption. That's where you are. The Bible says, even while you are still yet sinners, so let me put a little bit of sin here. Sin is always colored. Christ, who is God in human nature, he came down to die for you and I so that we can gain God's image again. So this is Christ, who is God. What is happening out to the ball? It's rising up, eh? That's how it is. So what Adam lost here, Christ gave it back to you there. Still colored, but light colored. So we go on, you see that the more of Christ you take in you, the lighter it becomes. Amen. Amen. Now, let me ask you this question. Are you created? No, I don't use created. Are you made in God's image and likeness? <coughs> yes? Are you sure? Let's go to Genesis chapter 5. Uh -huh. yes. I'll, I'll, there, a room for questions coming very soon. Genesis 5, yes. verse 1 going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 going. I'm yes. from the NIV version. Yeah. This is, this is the written account of Adam's life. Yes. When God created man, mm -hmm. he, made him, he made him in the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. He created them male and female and mm -hmm. blessed them. Yes. And when they were created, he called them man. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own likeness, mm -hmm. in his own image. Hold on. How old was Adam when he had a son? 
130. In which state did he have the son? In his own image and was Adam here when he made the son? Where was he? What is the name of the son? Set. Continue. In his own image. Mm -hmm. And he named him Set. Mm -hmm. After Set was born, mm -hmm. Adam lived 800 years mm -hmm. and had other sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Altogether, Adam lived 990, 930 years. Mm -hmm. And he? And he died. And he? Died. And he? Died. Does God die? No. But Adam died. What happened to the image? It was distorted. Carry on, please. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. When Seth had lived 105 years, 105. he became the father of Enos. So, let's take a pause here. Adam gave birth to Seth in his own likeness. You see that? An image, right? And he too gave son to another one in his own likeness. So, you can say that, please. So, it continued and continued and continued. So, my question is, are you Adam's image and likeness or you are God's image and likeness? Adam. Be honest. Adam. Adam. Be Adam's image and likeness. The Bible did not just put words anyhow. He said in his own image and likeness. So when Adam was here, if we are God's image like here, will Christ have to come and suffer? No. So when Adam was here, Christ had to come and lift us up from this stage. You see how it is? So if you are a child of God and you call yourself a child of God and you don't allow Christ to work in you to bring you up here, you still maintain the Adamic nature. Say Adamic nature. Adamic nature. Adamic nature. That means your morals, your conscience, your relationship with people, your rational sins, they will be distorted. Your creative idea, instead of you to create Things that will help people, you create machine guns to kill people. <laughs> yes, somebody invented that machine gun. What is used for machine gun? Yeah, for fight. To kill people. Kill. Yeah. yeah. Bombs. The C4 bomb. You put it in your car and you blast you. You distort your, I mean, your creative ideas. But if man was here, man had not lost God's image. Will man go and invent bomb to kill others? No. No matter how creative it is. Amen. Very soon I'll leave room for questions and answers. So, the first response to that entrance is the entrance of God is not eradicate or destroy God's image, but it's damage, causing man to die spiritually. So, if spiritually you are dead, it means you are still here. And some church members, some Christians are still dead. They are still here. It's my prayer that from today, you remain in God's image. Amen. And let Christ work on us. Amen. Amen. Now, Adam is dead after sin. That's what I have just explained. So I'm skipping on. The um, uncorrupted image of God was replaced by the fallen image of Adam. That's where we just read. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. So number one, the personality was corrupted. Producing an arrow of psychological problems. Number two, knowledge was degraded by false philosoph philosophies and vague imaginations. When you are in your room alone, what do you imagine? When you just spoke with a girl, you left her from the train station, you went to your house. What imagination, Christy, did you have when you were at home? <laughs> eh? When you visited Zyra and you saw that short skirt. You take your water account, it's not enough to buy. When you went to, what kind of imagination do you have? You imagine yourself in that short skirt like that. No. Okay, put your phones off. The emotions were also turned to selfish desires. We're supposed to love one another, love each other. But that image is now distorted. We no more longer love each other but we hate each other we bite bite one another that's not what god intended for us amen amen creativity was dispelled by evil purposes and passive like i was using the gun for example if you sit down and design a gun with a bullet in it to travel a thousand miles in a second 
to kill human beings, have you not distorted your creativity? Yes. I say what again? Amen. Good. What again happened to us? The image of God and salvation, through sanctification, the believer in Christ progressively grows in godliness, conforming more and more to the likeness of Christ, like this one. So the more and more I pour Christ on it, the color will be lighter and lighter and lighter, and the time will come to be as clean as this one. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, now, God conform us to the image and likeness of Christ, but not to Adam. Amen. Are you here? Is it well? Is it going well or I shall stop? Have I offended somebody? It's going well. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not me saying it, it's God saying it. Good. So when you read the next verses, Romans chapter 8, verse 8, 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good for them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For whom that he did for new. He also predestined to conform to what? To conform to what? To conform to the image of his who is his son? Who is God's son? Ah. So that means our image was Adam's image. So God is now conforming us to the image of who? Christ. So we were here. And God is now conforming us to the image of Christ. Amen. So that he might become firstborn among many brethren. And Colossians 3 verse 10 says, And have put and have put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of who? After the image of who? After the image of who? So if you are in God's image, why would he even waste his time to conform you again to his image? It means we were here. Now raise up your hand if you are here. Nobody. Nobody want to be there. So we all agree with me that God has conformed you and I to his, the likeness of his son Christ. Yes. Okay. Now, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, Ashanti or Eve, Ga or Moshi, Hausa or Dagomba, eh? I'm just fitting in because of the terms used there. Circumcision or non circumcision, either you are tall or short, fat or thin, barbarian, you are civilized, educated, or whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. Even if I'm preaching, you are talking, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is that, you feel me, eh? Uh -huh. What matters is that. Allow yourself to be worked upon by God so that you can remain in his image. Now, raise your hands by now. Who is in God's image? By now. Who is that? You see, because I look there. Nobody is sure of himself. Raise your hands up. Comfort. Are you measuring my size? Or your hand is up? Okay. Air hostess, you don't know where you are. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I want you to stand up. If, if you are not sure where you are, be on your feet. I want you to read the text. Romans eight twenty eight. What does the text say? And read it. She's reading. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh -huh. To them who are the, who are the called according to His purpose. purpose. Uh -huh. 29. For uh -huh. whom he did follow, uh -huh. he also did predestinate, predestinate uh -huh. conform to, to the, the image of his son, son, that he might be the firstborn first among many good one. So, when he says Christ came to die upon, upon the cross of Calvary, and then he rose again, and then you come to him and say, Lord, I take you to be my Lord and personal Savior. You are denouncing this image. I want you to be the king of my life. Jesus said, yes, I will do that. And begin to reign in your life. Then you begin to have his image. That's how it is. Then you have Adam's image no more. You don't have Adam's image no more. That is why when I 
pour the water in it, it begins to rise up. But when I put the dirty thing in it, it begins to sink. Mm -hmm. So now we all know where we are. Where are we now? Where are we now? Through who? Christ. So if you say, open your mouth and thank God, you must have a non-stop prayer. Because if you check where you were before, the Bible says even whilst we are still here sinners, he died for you, then he has lifted you up from that place. We sing this song, but you don't understand it. You lifted me from the miry clay forever. What about that we sing? Where were you? That miry clay, you were deep down here. Christ has done a lot for you. Let's give an applause to Christ for what you have done. Good. So the question is, it's almost done. What is the basic message of Christ? When he says Christ started his preaching, what was his first statement he made in Matthew? Repent. Why? Good. Repent. Get away from here. And be here. For the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is not a city. It's not a town like Brussels. It's how you allow God to reign in your life. He be the king on your life. He say, uh-uh, don't do that. Mm -mm. He hurts you, forgive. Yeah, he slap you, don't worry. Give the other cheek, let him slap again. Mm -hmm. But how many of us will do that? Mm -hmm. See? He comes concerned about you. You are filled. If I get a uh, comfort, the way I will tear her to pieces, I will put a big comfort and make it all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And God said, because I'm ruling in your heart, stop, my daughter. And come on and say, God. Mm. And one can to my God said, that's why I love you, my daughter. You see? So the more you do that, he is conforming you to the image of Christ. The second statement of Jesus in Mark 1, verse 5, he said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Therefore, re, 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 move from here to here. The last statement is in John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot enter oh, see the kingdom of God. Born again means when we were born in Adam's image, we were dead born. Yeah. So Jesus said, born again means renounce the old father Adam's image and come unto me. I will give you a new image. So at the end of the day, you're going to be where God wanted you to be. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Today you are kind of bummed. It's shocking you, right? It's good. If message kind doesn't shock you, then it's not a good message. Good. These are the basic message of, of Christ. Time for questions. I'm done. Simple. So Proverbs 26 said, A man who walks away from understanding will remain in the congregation of the dead. Now you understand God's image. You understand where you're supposed to be. You understand where you're supposed to get away from and where you must get to. Now, Elho said, you know where you are now? Yeah. You know whose image you are now? Yes. Amen. Let's give an applause to God. <laughs> question time. Mr. James, you wanted to ask a question. No, it's answered. Thank God. Yes. Uh, is everyone in the image of God? Like, does he don't believe in Christ? I don't think the image of God. Somebody answer him for me. Is everyone in God's image? No. They say no. You yourself, what do you think? No. So why did you ask me then? <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. It's not everyone. For sure, not everyone. Even not everyone here in this room is in God's image. No matter how Christ has done and he's still doing and he's still doing every Friday evening we preach, every Sunday morning we teach and preach, we pray and pray. Most are still here. And it's not easy to be there. And it's not easy to get away from there. You, there's something that you love so much that you can't let go. Those things can destroy you. You remain there forever till Jesus comes. That's why I go to that step one by one. The morals, the conscience, those things, they are God's image. Amen. So the more you work on it, 
What will help you? You just sit there and say, ah, I'm trying to get away from this kind of behavior, but I can't do it. Ah, ah, hum, hum, mm. That becomes your slogan. Then you cannot. And do you know the time you will die? Hmm? Who knows the time he will die? No one. Do you know when Jesus will come? No. So if you don't take care, you remain down there until he comes. Then what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Last, I was telling you about the rapture. I'm coming, Jeff. And the Spirit of God will be hovering on the air, in the air like that. And it's going to be like a magnet. It will attract pew, those who have God's spirit. So if you are here, it's easy to be taken away. What about if you are there? Then you are stuck. So it's a high time we change our ways. Say that do not please God, let's shine away from them. You know them. I'm not going there today. You know them. Uh huh? If made out of the image and glory of God, what are women then? Oh, if the boys the boy says man or man, man is a general name for everyone. You see, so the general is it's okay that he asks, eh? Then in chapter 5, where we read, he said he gave birth to Seth in his image and likeness. After Seth, he gave another one, a girl also to involved. And then after that, Seth also, hey, so men and women, we all descended from one father, Adam. <laughs> no more questions? And I'm bringing the message to an end. Father, my person, let's do it. Father, we thank you today that you have taught us your word. It's our prayer, Lord. Let this word be upon the tablets of our hearts forever. That we shall know and cherish what Christ has done for us. This and more we say, Lord, we thank you. In your powerful name we pray. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. 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 Thank you.